So how was the how's the press tour been so far? It's been good. Been really good. Yeah. Are you getting you kind of like it's? I, I, I would assume the question you're being asked the most is is what's it like being back in the character after so many years? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's a fair question. Yeah. <laughs> As questions go, um, you know, it's been it was really rewarding. It was hard. Uh, we didn't take it lightly. Did a lot of work to get there. Mm. to figure out who these guys were now, um, who they, how they would operate as grown-ups in the real world. But with a lot of the comedy comes from that too, so that was, that was the fun of it as well. I think it's funny because, I mean, I, I actually, I love the film. I, I really, really oh, loved I, it. I, seriously, and it was, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was not expecting it to, because, it, and again, this is, I don't mean this to sound like a dick thing or anything, but like, Normally, with these kind of legacy sequels, very often there's always something missing. You know, that sort of way. There's sort of like a reason why it hasn't been made in 15 years. But I'm wondering, you know, you as a director yourself and as a filmmaker, I mean, more often than not, when a film has been this long waiting to be made, you're kind of thinking to yourself, if this was going to happen, it would have happened by now. You know, that kind of way? I mean, what yeah, do you think? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is, is I'm quite close with the writers, Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon. We've all known each other a very long time. Keanu and I are very close. None of us had ever had any intention or really a desire to make a third movie. So uh, when we finished Bogus Journey, we, we were done and quite happily. And we enjoyed the films a lot, but we didn't really see any need to keep them going. Um, so I think it was the sheer audacity of the concept that they brought to us that that seemed worth pursuing I, the this notion of who are these guys at this age but let's actually drive into them at this age let's not avoid who they are and um i think that's that's hopefully why it doesn't feel like a like a kind of a pale retread it's also why it could have been a spectacular failure yeah. <laughs> frankly um but uh the guys are very good writers and they, yeah. they made rich and funny and, and we worked very very hard to figure out playing them uh and also we were surrounded by very good, good ensemble um i think those things conspired once we had dean pariso the director who's just he's fantastic so good, so good. Uh, I mean, we were very lucky uh we felt pretty confident that we would at least make something that had integrity whether or not people liked it much we there's no way to know until you put it out there yeah i mean but i mean that I always think that's kind of a bit of a cop. And again, I don't, I, 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 I swear, I really did love the film. But when people always say that, like, oh, we weren't sure until we made it. Like, I always feel like with a lot of comedy, a lot of comedy in particular, again, this is from interviewing people and stuff. They've always said, no, no, we could feel it in the room that we had something good. Like, I mean, did you feel that when you were making it? Yeah, I, I mean, there's, don't get me wrong, there's a distinction between us making something that we thought was good and, and knowing- And everyone else, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's a bit of a leap that you have to take, right? Like you have to accept us all these years later. You have to accept that we would still be even remotely the way we are at this age, uh, given life, um, you know, having had its way with us. And, uh, and we weren't certain, of, you know, and I think that, that's one of the things we liked about Dean Pariso is, and one of the things I love about his movies um, and Galaxy Quest in particular is, is that movie, you know, in a way has no right to work as well as it does. It, it, oh. And uh, everyone in it does a very good job. Um, he's very good at, at, at tone and, and, and tone that's challenging. Um, and so absolutely Keanu and I felt really even in prep, but certainly once we were shooting that we were in very good hands. Dean had a really ironclad idea of what the tone was and he was very good at keeping things kind of dialed together. So we weren't like throwing our hands up in the air going, well, maybe this works, maybe it won't. Yeah. It was just very hard to determine. Uh, let's put it this way. We had a much bigger response. Uh, we we just only just opened the UK, so it was too early to say, but sure. in the US we had a huge response. and. It was much bigger than we expected. It was way beyond the fan base. Um, and that we had no, we really, I know it sounds like show business. Sure, yeah. But we really did not have that expectation. The films were better critically received, this film by far than the first two, um, yeah. which were pretty roundly 
slated by all the critics. I don't know if that's true. Like, I mean, it's, 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 I suppose, yeah, it's, it's had a re- re-evaluation, I suppose. Yeah. It did, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of those critics were writing think pieces a decade later about how much importance Bill and Ted had to the culture. And I was sort of digging up their reviews and sending yeah. them. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, which is fair enough, like, that's, yeah. you know, part of what makes comedy, you know, the idiosyncrasies of the comedy, but, uh, but, so we've had a really good response and we're, we're really grateful for that. And that we de- definitely did not see coming. Yeah. It's funny. You mentioned, you talked about Dean Parasol a lot. And I mean, you're right. He's a fantastic director and you look at like Galaxy Quest or Red or any of this stuff, but I'm wondering, I mean, you yourself, like, I mean, you did like Freaks back in the day with Tom Stern. I mean, did you harbor any kind of desire to direct yourself or was this, no, I'm happy to hand this off? No, I really didn't. Um, you know, the, the, the thing that was really fun for me, I stopped acting in professionally in 93. And uh, the thing that was fun about this was how many different versions of ourselves we get to play. And yeah. that, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's hard, like, in, just in terms of man hours, like in terms yeah. of ear practical sweat equity that's hard uh from an acting standpoint it's also hard and i did not um i did not have the hubris to assume that i could do all of that well um and maintain the very tricky tone of a bill and ted movie which is not easy i've watched two other directors do it i i would say quite well yeah uh, hewitt and, and stephen Herrick. um I would never have tried to act in this and, and direct it at the same time. There's, I think that I would have done one of them very badly and uh, that would not have been good. Yeah. Um, I loved as well the fact that, you know, throughout all of this, you know, the idea being that Bill and Ted, they never lost faith. You know, that kind of that idea of like, they've had like, you know, however many decades together, they're still trying to make the song that will unite the world. Is there something in that? I mean, I feel like, I, I don't know, like we, we're so used to kind of seeing people being trodden down and beaten down after so many years. I just wonder, like, I mean, for you as an actor playing that, I mean, was there anything in particular that you tapped into beyond the script? I mean, was it just the dynamic you and Keanu had that you were able to say, yeah, we can, we can perceive this? Like, Well, it wasn't just that. I mean, the thing that we, that we discussed together and with the writers that we really really felt strongly about was that we were that we wanted to bring the gravity of life to these guys that we wanted to bring the life experience that he and I have had over the last 30 years the ups and the downs and and the kind of weight of life uh we wanted to bring that to these guys that was very important to us and and uh, that's what made it playable was that we weren't just trying to put on our old clothes and act like we were 22 years old we were we wanted to be who we were, filtered through Bill and Ted. Um, and that's very much what we did, sure. Yeah. In terms of uh, yourself, I mean, like, because I, I noticed, like, when they're in the, the, the wedding scene or whatever, like, you're doing, like, throat singing, and it's all this really eclectic music and talking about theremin and fire and whatever. You, I mean, you've directed, like, music videos for, like, Helmet and Red Hot Chili Peppers and Ice Cube and all these guys. What kind of music do you actually listen to yourself? Uh, I mean, or, or I are you a big music guy at all? Like, I am, yeah, uh, huge, but it's pretty eclectic. Um, so it's it's the full range of everything, basically. You know, I'm I'm very big into into rock music, obviously, but I'm equally big on classical and I'm equally big on jazz. So, wow. um, you know, I I don't know what my favorite would be because I listen to all kinds of stuff. Sure, yeah. I, got, I came up in the '80s in New York when when rap was really exploding. And the artists there were, were incredible. Uh, it was a great time uh, musically, uh, as far as that goes. It was it was terrible yeah. in other areas of the musical world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I really like a, a, a wide variety of, of stuff. I tend to, you know, like uh, artists that that um, push the envelope in some way, whether they're in jazz or rock or classical. Yeah. Anything specific you're listening to at the minute? Like, what have you it's got anything in your car or on your Spotify or whatever? Uh, I mean, I'm always listening to a lot of jazz. So, um, and we were really lucky. We got Christian Scott was in our film and who I love. And, and my son's a trumpet player, so he was pretty blown oh, wow. away. Um, but I'm always listening to a lot of jazz. I was pretty, uh, uh, you know, the two, I guess the two new albums of the summer that I liked 
that I'd probably listened to the most were the uh, the new Fiona Apple and the new Bob Dylan. Yes, probably got the most yeah most circulation uh, um, for me. But then they found that that they found that unreleased Coltrane album, which was incredible because it was like suddenly he was back amongst us again. Yeah, um, so I say those three. Yeah, that's probably no, the Fiona Apple album in particular was amazing. Incredible. So good. Yeah. So that was good. we called we called that the the pandem pandemic album at our house. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Like everyone's kind of just found like one little thing that they're latching onto throughout this pandemic. Yeah. It's like one little bit of content. Yeah. Yeah. And like I think kind of Bill and Ted has kind of become that in a certain degree, isn't it? Like I mean the fact that yeah, this was like B O G. That doesn't work for me. Oh no? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm too close to it. I'm yeah. happy I'm happy that it's there for other people. That's that's been really, really uh, an upside to a pretty down situation, both obviously the circumstances the world finds itself in and just the difficulty of releasing a movie during a pandemic. But yeah. Um, the fact that people are, are responding to it and and um, and find it uh, something that gives them a smile at this time it's it's great like that's that's an amazing thing yeah absolutely I mean that's it like I mean I I was watching it with my fiance and I had the headphones on I was watching the laptop and she was looked over and she said you've been smiling for the last 25 minutes as you're watching that I was I didn't even fucking realize it like that I was doing it like so but um I make that that genuinely makes me happy yeah you know? that's good yeah um I wanted to ask, you, you mentioned there earlier that you basically retired from professional acting in, in 93. I mean, with the success of this and everything else, do you see yourself possibly giving another shot or? Yeah, I would do some more. I mean, I, I took time off for very specific reasons and I came back for very specific reasons. So, um, so yeah, I could see myself doing more. I, I mean, I'm happy that uh, the work that I'm doing as a filmmaker is kind of driving itself at the moment. So I, it's not like I would need to do it, which is a good place to be. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm in a place in my life where I'd like to do a little, do a little bit more again. Yeah, definitely. It was like, fun. I mean, the, Zap, the Zappa documentary in particular, like, I mean, that looks really, really interesting. Like really want to hope that kind of. Oh, things. thanks. Yeah. I hope you like it. It's been five, six years of, of very hard labor. It was, it was hard. Uh, I'm really happy with the movie uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting it out. And, and it's, it's high time the story was told, whether I did it or someone else. It's a, it's an amazing life story. Um, and I'm really, really into what we did and it did not come easily. Um, but uh, uh, it also got waylaid by the pandemic. We were about to do a big world premiere and film festival tour and all that died. So mm. Uh, we had to kind of regroup and figure out what we were doing. Now we're fine and rolling out. So yeah, was it? Do you mind me asking? Just because I'm a big Frank Zappa fan, like I mean, was it just was it issues with the estate or was it just? Oh no, it had nothing to do with the estate at all. They were they were fantastic. I mean, I pitched the movie to Gail while she was alive. She loved my take and which was great, and she gave me full access, which no one had ever had, and we did not take that lightly, and we. We did a crowdfund campaign, raised a lot of money and preserved a lot of the material in the vault that was in disrepair. Um, and that's just now that that's preserved for, for posterity, which is great. Um, so no, we, we had, you know, they basically just said, here's the archive, go to town. And we just got to work. It's just challenging trying to release a movie during this period. And yeah. if you're an independent documentary, which is what we are, we had to, that's usually based on sales around film festival premieres. And we had our world premiere and we had, subsequent premieres all over the world and those were done and that was going to be our sales model and then that sales model vanished Thanks. um we had to go okay now what do we do so uh we figured it out you know the movie business is scrappy and i can tell you that the world of independent documentary filmmaking is especially scrappy um so we figured yeah. it out it took a minute yeah now that's good to hear because like i said like you're absolutely right i think frank zappa he has such an influence and an impact like and he has not gotten the credit he deserves or the actual story to be told i think agreed yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean i felt that way for years so yeah that'd be cool um my final question is about bill and ted four and i just have to ask this just because i'd be shot if i didn't if they if ed solomon and Craig Matheson came to you with a good story would you do a fourth one look we didn't intend to do a third. Sure. <laughs> we did a third because they had a great idea. And then frankly, the fans made it very known that they wanted one, which is, was the only reason we were able to finance the third. 
Um, it was really the fans, the very vocal uh, fan base that, that made the financiers confident. Um, if those two things occur again, that will be the, the kind of ignition that gets a, a fourth one going. Without that, there is no fourth one. So I, I neither Keanu nor myself is ex, is, has expectations for a fourth. Uh, that being said, we love working together. They're really fun. The movie was really fun for us. Um, and if it felt like there was an appetite, we'd be open. Cool, cool. Listen, thanks so much. And like I said, I did genuinely love the film. So best of luck with it. And uh, hopefully they're all in the UK and Ireland as well for you. Great. Thanks so much. I appreciate cool. it.